Hello guys, in this episode we are going to touch this photo, this is the before photo and this is the after photo. Come and join me. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, welcome to episode 29 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli and I'm a French photographer living in Paris, beautiful city of Paris in the middle of France. All right, guys, last week I showed you how to retouch this long exposure photo. This is the before photo and this is the after photo. If you like it, check out last week's episode. This week, we're going to retouch a multiple exposure. This is the normal exposure and this is the underexposure. And we're going to blend both exposure and do some retouching in Photoshop and use the plugging of ColorFX Pro. A lot of things is going to go on on this photo, but that's the final result. So let me show you how I did this. Okay, guys. So this week's retouching is um, this photo from the Eiffel Tower. This is actually um, a bracketed photo I took. So this is the normal exposure. This is the underexposure. And this is the overexposure. Uh, it's minus two, plus two, and zero. Uh, that's, you know, I have a Canon 5D Mark II, and that's something you can program when you do HDR. Now, I didn't do it to make HDR. I did it because I wanted to make sure I had a whole dynamic range. There was a very nice sunset happening, and I wanted to make sure that I have enough information about the sky and enough information about the statue in front. I wanted to have both, which is very tricky because this is a backlit situation. Uh, now, if you look at the information, this photo is 0.6 second at f22. Now, the reason I did f22 is that I wanted this to be sharp and I wanted the Eiffel Tower to be sharp. So, and this is what, uh, that's why it's a long exposure. That's one six of second at f22, and that is 2.5 second at f22 and there's still uh, there is still a lot of light now the sunset doesn't look very nice uh, this way but that's really that's the case when um, cameras don't do a good job because believe me it was really a nice sunset and even the underexposed photo doesn't give it justice it's not going to be i mean it's not going to be as crazy as i'm going to go because you know i like very saturated and crazy colors that's my taste uh, you know i like heavily retouched photo uh, because they look like, you know, movies and movies is heavily retouched. That's my style. But if you follow my tutorials, you can always, you know, go down. You don't have to go as much saturated that I like. Uh, and the techniques should help you anyway. So I, I was hesitating between retouching either the normal exposure and retouching the underexposed photo. And you know how I decided is that I took the, the normal exposure and what I did is that I lowered down the exposure to see how much detail I had in the sky, in the raw file. And yes, there is detail, but you can see here it's totally burned out. And I don't like when it's burned out because it's information which is completely lost. Uh, by the way, if you press the option key and you go onto the white slider, you can see. See, I have done nothing. It's completely white. This is lost information. So I decided to use the underexposed photo. And that's the one we're going to retouch. So let's go. Let's open up the shadows so that we can see what's happening. Now, when you do that, when you open up the shadows, you see it comes with a lot of noise here on the statue, but it's okay. You know, it's kind of tolerable. We can deal with it. Uh, next, I'm going to bring down the highlights and then I'm going to press the option key and put my white point, which is basically going to the right until I see some white points, but I don't. Yeah, just I want to see a little bit of white and then I'm going to do my black points by going left until I see a little bit of blacks. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that. I'm, yeah, it's not so bad. I'm gonna boost the clarity. That's one thing. I'm gonna boost a bit the vibrance. Uh, and then I'm gonna take care of the, um, well, let's first, uh, first things first. Let's do the lens correction by just enable profile correction. That's what I do on every photo. Okay, this was taken with a 24 70 millimeter. So it, there's not that much correction there. Uh, let's uh, remove chromatic aberration because it's still, uh, it's still a photo which is um, against the sun. And sometimes that's a bit of a problem. You can get like, a, for example, in the Eiffel Tower, I don't know if I have some chromatic aberration, but as you retouch the photo and as you contrast it, as you push it 
to the most you can get some chromatic apparition appearing all of a sudden. So it's very important to uh, mark this. Okay, next I'm going to go and take care of the noise. Now I'm going to go on the statues because that's something that's important for me. And I'm going to reduce the noise on the statute. Uh, but you see, it, it's mainly, okay, now that's better, but there's still what we call color noise. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but you've got red, green, red, green, and a bit of blue spots. If I go to colors and I take everything out, that's pretty cool. So now most of the noise, let's go, I go to 50 on the luminance noise, which is the grainy noise, and almost to 100 to the color noise. Now I want to sharpen this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, a that's something new I've been doing over the last few weeks and I like that. I'm going to put the sharpening around 80, which is a lot of sharpening, but I don't like what it does to the sky. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it makes a little grain in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the option key and use a detail function here. And you will see when I go to the right, oh, sorry, uh, it's, it's not the detail, it's the masking function here. So, sorry, between sharpening, I press the option key, I go to the right and see how it's all white here when it's at zero. That means that the sharpening is being applied everywhere on the photo. If I go on the right, I just want the sharpening to be uh, done on the contour of the elements, something like that. I don't want any sharpening to be done on the sky. I don't want any sharpening to be done on anything which is flat within a statue. I just want the contour. So I go to 79 and you can see that only the contour, uh, there is sharpening happening too. So then you get a, a nice sky back again. So, okay, now, now, now we did that. Um, now let's take care of the, um, of the white balance. It's for me, it's, I wanna make a little trick here. Because I love contrast, I, you know, the, the, the sunset was much nicer than that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on shade. Why shade? Because shade is going to make a much warmer photo. See, here is shade. That's a lot warmer. I like that. But I still want to have the contrast of having a kind of a blue sky. So I'm going to add an ND filter. And uh, if you follow my tutorials, you know that the ND filter is just a filter. It's a gradient filter. This is a gradient. Anything that I do here on the right is going to be applied on a gradient, starting at full here on the gradient till here. So what am I going to do on this gradient? I'm going to lower the exposure to make the sky a bit darker. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm going to make the sky a bit bluer on the top here. And the reason is, voila, I want blue sky against red sun here. That makes a color contrast that I like, all right? So that's kind of cool. Now, I wanna add more drama into the sunset because it was a lot more redder than that. So I'm gonna do a trick. I'm gonna take this brush and um, I'm gonna put the brush, the yellow, like around 60 and the tint around 60, both of them, all right? Now I'm gonna make a big brush and what I'm gonna do, and that's very important, I'm gonna keep, gonna keep feather at 100 but I'm gonna uh, flow, I'm gonna put flow around 60 and density around 60. Now, when I'm gonna paint, so I'm painting just with colors. What's happening is that uh, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's getting warmer, but it's not getting too much warmer. Okay, I'm just doing it here. And now I'm gonna add a new brush. I'm gonna keep the same settings, but this time I'm gonna put flow and density a bit higher. And I'm just going to concentrate here and maybe add a bit more red. And I'm going to concentrate here and make this part just a bit more red. Wow, that's a bit too much. I love too much, but that's even for me is a bit too much. So I'm going to go back on that. Yeah, I don't want to put so much. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so now we've got like a red sunset with a blue sky. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to crop the photo. So I'm going to take the crop tool. And I want to make this a bit more, you know, um, panoramic looking. So, oops, I'm going to go up like this, something like that. And I'm going to go down like this. Just want to make, you know, a bit more panoramic look. I think it works well. So we are like more on the statue, more on the Eiffel Tower. All right. Last but not least, I'm going to put some post crop vignetting so that we have, you know, more attention here in the center. Um, Okay, maybe add a bit of contrast and a bit of exposure. 
not too much, something like that. Okay. And uh, now one thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to keep this photo and then I'm going to take this photo, the normal exposure, which I'm going to click on reset because I think I did something. Yeah. Okay. Reset. And I'm just going to open up the shadows a little bit. And the reason why I'm taking this photo is and put the highlights down and add some clarity, a lot of clarity. Yeah, a lot of clarity is I love how the statue is looking on this photo. Maybe I'm going to lower the exposure. So what I'm going to do now is take this photo and this photo that we just retouched. Uh, oh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I want to make sure they have the same cropping. So I'm going to take this photo and this photo and click on sync, uh, check none and just take crop. I just want to crop this photo and maybe the white balance and the process version. Process version, it's the, that's the minimum that you have to uh, click when you do synchronization. Process version is the way Lightroom handles your raw file. It has changed over the years. So uh, it's imp we are using now 2012 process version, which is the, the latest and the hottest and the best. Okay, so now we've got the crop, the process version and the white balance. And I'm gonna synchronize this with my other photos. So now we have the same cropping and we have a bit the same tone. It's a bit of a warmer tone. All right, next I'm gonna right click, edit, and I'm gonna open as layers in Photoshop. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna open Photoshop and put each file on its own layer, but in the same file, okay? So that's very important. And this way, I just wanna take the best, not the best, but some elements of the, uh, of the normal exposed photo uh, and put it on the, um, okay. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. Check this out. It's, you see when you when you press the photo and um, and you do this you can tell that they, they, they don't exactly the, they don't exactly look the same the reason is I did uh, on on a normal photo I did not do the uh, lens correction so let me command W this let me uh, I'm not gonna save it I just close this I go back I forgot sync I forgot one thing is to uh, th sync the lens correction on both photos that's very important that they look alike. Uh, because the lens correction is going to change the photo and I did it on the underexposed photo, but not on the normal exposure. So now I right click, edit, open as layers in Photoshop. And now both photos should be cropped exactly uh, the same and they should have exactly the same uh, uh, geometry, basically. Uh, same thing, you know, when you press the layer, the only thing that should change is the exposure, not the look of the photo. Okay, so let's see if that works. Uh, Okay, you see, now it's exactly the same photo except we don't have the same exposure. So that's perfect. I've got the the normal exposure on top and I've got the, the one which is the underexposed at the bottom. Now all I'm gonna do is press the Option key and press the Mask tool. That's gonna mask my layer. So, you know, now we have a black mask. That means anything which is on that layer is invisible. Then I'm gonna press B for a brush. So I'm taking a brush. I'm gonna put the opacity of that brush of around 40%. And I'm just gonna brush and bring some of the um, normal exposed photo uh, details on the statue. And there is two advantages to it. One is that, you know, we get nice details, okay? Uh, and also it takes the noise out because this is the part that, was, that had the most noise. This way, we don't have much noise. And plus we get really sharp looking, strong, you know, statue in the foreground. Check it out. Before, after, before, after. Make sure you don't go like this. Otherwise it's gonna make hellos. So come and see, you know, make sure you stay within the statue. Uh, I can even, if you think it's too much, lower a bit the opacity so it melts better. Uh, but that's basically it. Okay, then I'm gonna finish off in Photoshop. So I'm gonna press Command E to merge both layers because I'm happy with that. That was just a little thing to get more details. Command J uh, because uh, I want to uh, com uh, work on this layer. So first, uh, I shot at f22. When you shoot at f22, you have a very close shutter. And when you have a very close shutter, you get all uh, kind of little spots here. So I took the spot here. 
the spot healing brush and I'm just cleaning up a bit the photo because especially in the corners you get these spots and usually you get them when you go like over F13 at least that's how it works on my Canon 5D Mark II I mean le the longer the exposure the close the closest your uh, shutter speed is more you get these little uh, dirt and if I would shot the same photo at F8 I would get almost no dirt that's something that's completely within um, this shutter closing thing Okay, that's cool. So command E. I'm happy with that. Command G again to work on its own layer. Um, I want to take this out, so I'm going to press S for the stem tool, which is here. A little trick to take this out. I don't like this. This is distracting. I'm going to press the Option key uh, here to sample a part here. Then I'm going to go and make sure this is aligned and just click, 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 click. Then I'm going to click here. Do the same thing here. You know, I'm clicking alt here and uh, all right now I'm gonna click here and make this a bit lower lower and I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit uh, let me make sure that I've got no repeating uh, patterns within the water okay same thing here I don't like this this uh, this thing here so I'm gonna take it out boom and this I'm gonna take out to voila Okay, oh the bus also I don't like the, the what the bus is doing so for this I'm going to sample here and uh, Get aligned here and just click take this out Okay, and then I'm going to sample here Make sure this is aligned and this out uh, I'm going to take this lamp out. This is cool. I just want voila Okay, so I just took a few distracting elements out So I'm going to press command E and now I'm going to go to filter Nick software color FX pro I like to experiment a lot with color FX pro these days uh, because uh, I know I just like to do it so uh, one thing I'm going to do to this photo is first I'm going to go to uh, in my favorite I have the um, no I don't have it in my favorite and I should brilliance and warms I like the way it does so I'm going to go on brilliance and warms and make the whole photo warmer so the way I do this is I just go warmer a bit like this I like the type of warm that it does you know it's a different warm and then then changing the white balance on your computer I just I just like it okay then I'm gonna click on add filter let's add a little tonal contrast and that's a very strong filter I really like that uh, but it's a bit too much here so maybe I'm gonna lower a bit this one uh, lower the, the strengths on the shadows on the mid-tones and on the highlights I want it but not that strong I like the way it does the contrast Ooh, I like it you know it's very uh, it's a bit over the top some people don't like so much saturated colors but I secretly love it but please please don't tell anyone okay uh, maybe or oh, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click add filter and I'm gonna use the detail extractor I love this one. This this is a detail extractor is going to give a sort of HDR look to your photo, but I don't want this to be applied on the, on, on everything. I just want this to be applied on the statue. So I'm going to click on the control points, and just click, uh, click on the control points. Thank you, here and click on the statue. Okay, and basically it's only going to affect. You see, if I move here, it's only going to affect the statue, uh, something like that, and I put it here. You know, it just drags a bit of attention more on the statue, make it it very sharp. I like that. I like that very much. Okay, I'm gonna add one more filter, and I'm gonna go for the vignette. Love the vignette in Color FX Pro. Um, you can just check a lot. Now it's calculating. You see, it's calculating. Now the vignette is a bit strong, so I'm gonna lower the opacity of the vignette. I don't want it to be so strong. Okay, it's a bit lagging now because I've got four things on the top of each other. So it's a bit it's a bit lagging, I must say, but I kind of like it. Okay, check it out. Before the vignette, after the vignette. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, and basically that's it. So I'm going to press OK. And that's how I retouched that photo. And um, I had a, actually that photo worked very well. And it's funny because the first time I took that photo, I didn't want to retouch it because I was so disappointed. Uh, on how the sunset came out like not as it was you know it was a lot more nice in real now I think I went a bit unreal I went even more saturated than reality but who cares 
you know, we are trying to do art here. We are trying to please people. And, you know, I'm not doing journalism. I'm doing creation. So, voila. Ooh, a very nice dramatic scene in Paris. I love it. Okay, guys. So, before we finish and we go back, I just want to say that I still have a 30% discount on all my training if you buy the packages. All Lightroom 4 training, all Photoshop training, minus 30%. You, you pay all my Photoshop training $28 instead of $40 and all my Lightroom training $21 instead of $30 and the whole Photoshop and Lightroom training $49 instead of $70. It took me years to make this training, so I hope you really enjoy it. It's pretty cheap. Uh, it's a steal, but you know, uh, it helps me be able to finance it, this podcast. So thank you very much for all your purchase. Now let's go back to the studio. Okay, guys, so I hope you liked that tutorial. It was a funny story because I was really going to throw away this photo. I was never going to retouch it. And finally, I, I was really happy how it came out. And it was a pretty big hit on 500px. I always like to have the feedback from other photographer. And this one had some success. Okay, guys, this with inspiration is Nick Software website. Now, I have been using a lot Colorifix Pro in my last episodes. And I think I will use it more and more. And I will also do several tutorials on Silver FX Pro and HDR FX Pro. I think they are really great plugins, probably the best plugin out there. If you go on the website, you will find there is tons of tutorials on how to use their products. And I really invite you to check it out because it's really today a very important tool for a photographer. Okay, if you can help me share this podcast on whatever you have, Google+, Facebook, you know, put you the podcast on your t-shirt and go out and promote it. Whatever you can do to promote it, that'd be very nice. And I'll see you next week.